IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1, has been shown that it basically speeds up the process of growing. We can see this demonstrated in the fact that when a baby cow is born and drinks the milk of its mother, the milk helps to increase levels of IGF-1, which helps to speed up its growth, the baby cow. Now, IGF-1 basically increases the rate at which you age. And it just so happens that there was a study demonstrating that guys who had higher levels of IGF-1 had a greater incidence of vertex, vertex balding. So if you want to slow down the rate at which you lose your hair, it's best to keep low levels of IGF-1. Now one of the ways that you can increase IGF-1 is by consuming dairy and meat. Protein seems to be the single, um, well I, I shouldn't say single, but one of the great ways in which you can actually increase insulin growth factor 1. And it does seem to show that folks who have higher levels of IGF-1 have a greater instance of androgenic alopecia. Um, so dairy is known to increase IGF-1 levels greatly. Vegans are vegetarians who avoid meat and dairy tend to have a lot lower levels of IGF-1. So essentially they're not aging as faster. And their growth rate is reduced. Now this is important because let's say you have cancer. You don't want to be taking IGF-1 when you have cancer because you don't want the cancer to proliferate and grow. You want to stop growing once you reach adulthood. You don't want to keep growing if you care about staying young and healthy and vital. So, that's just one of the mechanisms that dairy and meat can do to you, which would cause excessive hair loss, is through IGF-1. The other thing that many people may not know is that dairy also contains DHT precursors. And so when you're drinking dairy, you're actually getting an increase in DHT, believe it or not. And DHT has been, again, shown to suffocate the hair follicles on the top of the head, because that's where the receptors are, and suffocate them until they're growing thinner and thinner and thinner until eventually you're completely bald. So essentially the higher levels of DHT that you have in your body, if you are genetically susceptible to going bald and you have the genes for that, those receptors, that DHT is going to attach to those receptors, shrink them, and boom, you're going to go bald quicker. So, meat and dairy, not so good if you're concerned about your hair. Um, especially so if you're predisposed to going bald. The other thing is that studies show that men who have um, higher levels of sex hormone binding globulin, or SHBG, have a lower incidence of male pattern baldness. This is great because studies show that those who have less um, SHBG in their body actually have more chest hair, which is not so good for some of you out there. Some of you might not want that. So, um, drinking green tea, above all else, believe it or not, actually will raise a, a sex hormone binding globulin, which is great to reduce hair loss. So that's something that is good and would strongly encourage people to drink more of is green tea. Um, and you know a lot of these things when you really look into it and the scientific reasons behind it, if you just go out and observe, and I'm not saying this is true 100% across the board, but I will say that many f people that consume a lot of meat and dairy, okay, and eat anything under the sun, seem, in my opinion, to be aging awfully quick, have many health issues, and more so than anything, many guys going bald. 
Um, and I do believe this has related to our diet and lifestyle greatly and how these different things operate in our body. Because, you know, Asians um, typically don't consume the, the typical standard American diet, okay? They're not consuming a lot of the, the meats and dairy and all that stuff that we are, but have a lower incidence of androgenic alopecia. So, it seems to me, and it seems to be clear that the folks who are drinking a lot of dairy, eating a lot of meat, you know, are and have the genes to go bald are simply speeding up that whole process simply from their diet and lifestyle. And of course we can learn a lot from folks out over in the East who live more on a diet of rice and vegetables because they aren't, you know, really doing all the screwing around with their hormones. And so their body is typically more in balance and they're not aging as fast so, you know, of course they simply don't have as many of these problems that we have here. So, black tea, green tea, avoidance of dairy and meat and fish and eggs. Excellent strategies if you want to maintain your youth, slow aging, because again, higher levels of IGF-1 is correlated with faster aging and it's been shown that folks who follow a calorie restricted diet or CRONS, Crohn's for short, an acronym for calorie restriction, um, appear to age slower. So IGF-1, higher levels you have, worse. The worse it is, the faster you age. And you can see that from folks who promote colostrum, deer antler and whatnot. A lot of these folks who are big meat, dairy, and consumers and who also take these supplements to boost their IGF-1 levels are simply aging much quicker than other people are. And so that's that's not a good thing if you're into anti-aging. So uh, if you want to slow aging, if you want to pre preserve your hair, um, make sure you keep your IGF-1 levels low. Um, and you do that by, of course, you know, what you're eating. Um, so, the other thing that I would mention too, and it's kind of a mixed, mixed uh, studies on this, but some studies have shown that even soy protein isolate can actually raise your IGF wood levels even more so than dairy, believe it or not. And any kind of isolated protein is going to be detrimental and not good for your body. Any kind of protein you want should be coming from a whole food. It should be a whole food form of protein, not an isolate. Um, it seems that people like to isolate a lot of nutrients from their cofactors, and that just simply is not going to be that recognizable by the body. So the body's going to create an autoimmune reaction to that, which will be a spiral down effect of poor health. So it's better to leave the soy protein isolates and any of the protein isolates alone and only consume whole food forms of protein, meaning... We shouldn't be so concerned really about protein anyways. We need far less than what people say and you can get just as much of it from beans and nuts and seeds and even vegetables. I mean every plant food has amino acids which is the building blocks of protein but some people don't know what amino acids are so now you know. Um, but yeah, even soy, believe it or not, can actually increase IGF-1 levels. So if you're a big soy consumer, you know, be mindful of that. I'm not saying never to eat soy or anything like that. I'm just saying be mindful of that um, and make, you know, a good choice. Be reasonable. Be moderate in whatever you consume. So, um, I guess the bottom line is IGF-1 levels, higher IGF-1 levels, and lower levels of sex hormone binding globulin, or SHBG, have been associated with a higher incidence of androgenic alopecia. So, you know, try to choose foods or beverages that decrease IGF-1 or raise sex hormone binding globulin. Green tea, black tea, all excellent. That help to do that. And I believe also that lycopene found in tomatoes will help to decrease IGF-1. And it also helps to inhibit DHT, which is a known aggravator for... Um, 
benign prostatic hyperplasia or enlarged prostate and androgenic alopecia and acne because they're all directly related to the, the amount of DHT in your body. So it's not that you want to totally eliminate these things, but you want a normal, healthy balance of them in your body. And, you know, when you're consuming a healthy diet, all of these things are balanced out in your body because your body is very intelligent. But when you're taking in external things like cow's milk and meats and all these things on a continual daily basis, um, you're going to get an excess pumping up of these hormones and it's going to wreak havoc on you in one way, shape, form, or fashion. So you got to be mindful of that um, if you're concerned, obviously, about these things I'm talking about. So with that, take care. I'll see you in my next video.